Hi everybody, welcome to the shop. Uh, I'm gonna try my hand at my own channel. I'm gonna call it, These Are My Cars. I'm your host, James, and this is my first episode. What you're looking at here is a head off of a Ford 2.3 liter Lima engine. Uh, I have a 1988 Merker XR4 Ti. Uh, I'll do probably, I'm sure, several episodes on that car as I've done a lot of modifications to it. Uh, what we're working on today is porting and polishing the head. Now I've made some older videos, but they weren't very good. It was an old iPhone and I thought I'd just do a follow-up video uh, with, a new, uh, with a new camera. So what we have here is the final finished product. Uh, I've mentioned a couple of times that I tried to port and polish a head, ruined it because I broke through into the coolant passages sectioned it on the bandsaw so I could learn, uh, and then did another head. In that case, it was, it was cracked. Uh, that was another practice head, but that established that I finally knew what I was doing. And so this is the third head that I ported and polished, and this is the final product. So uh, what I started with for this particular head is actually a naturally aspirated head. Uh, and I would recommend starting with one of these if you're going to do a port and polish job uh, because uncracked turbo heads are probably no longer existent. Uh, I, at least I, I tried for quite some time to find one and eventually gave up. The only difference between a naturally aspirated D port and a turbo D port head is the combustion chamber. Everything else is the same intake and exhaust ports. Uh, cam towers, every, everything is identical. And by difference, what I mean is in the naturally aspirated combustion chamber, there's a peak right in the middle here. Uh, but as you can see, I've uh, polished this combustion chamber and I've also uh, ground this back to unshroud both the exhaust and intake valves. And if you're working this with a carbide bit, because the, in the head, this uh, ridge here is uh, completely vertical. And so by cutting it back, uh, you know, you're already working this area, getting rid of the peak here in the naturally aspirated combustion chamber is another 10 minutes worth of work. So it's really no big deal to start with a naturally aspirated head. And like I said, you're much more likely to get one where the exhaust seats aren't cracked. This is where, this is where they crack in turbo manifolds. They'll, they'll, they usually crack on, on the inside edge here. Um, and you know, the naturally aspirated, they're going to be exposed to less heat, much less likely to be cracked. And that was the, the case for this one. Plus they're also far more plentiful. And because they're more plentiful, they're relatively cheap in comparison. So what I've done here is I put some uh, die cam blue uh, on this because uh, it actually helps the camera focus when the combustion chambers are polished uh, to this mirror-like finish the camera has a hard time uh, focusing and so I left the die cam blue on here just to help out with that and then what I've done is I've lapped each you know exhaust valve was numbered and went into cylinders you know one through four same thing with the intake and then I lapped you know each individual valve to each individual seat and uh, you can see here uh, the, where the, the lapping compound has worn away the area of the, uh, the valve uh, contact seat. Uh, in this, and I've checked it out. In this case, they're just under two millimeters for the intake, and they're just a smidge over two millimeters for the exhaust. And that works out perfectly fine. It should be between 1.7 and two millimeters is, is within specification. Uh, the machine shop I've been using for all of the, the valve grinding work, I've put larger valves in, uh, is r &L Engines. They're in Dover, New Hampshire. Uh, I'm no longer located in New Hampshire. I've moved to California, uh, but they were fantastic. And Ron there uh, taught me everything that I know about porting and polishing. Uh, I brought the head back to him probably a good dozen times and he provided constant instructions as to what I should work, what I should stay away from, what I should focus on. Uh, so a huge shout out to Ron and r &L Engines. So as you can see, the combustion chamber has been perfectly ported. 
most of the uh, valve guide boss on both the intake and exhaust ports have been completely removed uh, and that opened up things a lot. Now on both the intake and the exhaust in the bowl area here there's a there's a ridge and I've completely removed that and opened it up uh, and uh, what r &L engines did is when they did the flow testing, they flow tested the intake before when it had the small valve. Uh, then they did the valve job, opened it up, did a little bit of port matching to match the rest of, of the port, and then reflow tested it with the big valve. And the big valve maxed out at uh, 194 CFM at half inch lift. Whereas with the small valve, uh, it maxed out at about 0.4 inch lift and the max flow there was 159 CFM. So a big difference, 159 to 194, um, and, but the lift difference is 0.4 uh, was the max uh, flow for the small valve and 0.5 inch lift for the large valve. So that's, that's uh, quite an improvement. And then on the exhaust side, they didn't do a comparison between the small and the large, but the large also maxed out at half inch uh, valve lift. And the total flow there was 116.5 CFM. Um, okay, so I'll pause here and then let's have a look at the intake ports.